Just when you thought Justin Trudeau's leadership mess couldn't get any worse, here we go again. Fresh off a humiliating by-election loss, Trudeau's now ducking out of the Calgary stampede. Last year, he got booed like crazy there, so now he's avoiding it like the plague. But skipping the stampede just shines a big spotlight on the growing chaos in his own party. His own MPs are practically shouting for him to quit. Nathaniel Erskine-Smith is even calling for a confidence vote to kick Trudeau out. It's a bold move straight at Trudeau's shaky authority. Other liberal MPs are saying Trudeau's days are numbered. Those boos from last year were just the start of the revolt he's facing now. After losing touch with Canadians and blowing a major by-election in Toronto, Trudeau's getting heat from all sides. People are mad at him from coast to coast, and he can't show his face without getting heckled. Even friendly media types are saying Trudeau's got to go after steering the liberal ship into an iceberg. With the next election creeping closer, Trudeau's hoping to avoid another round of boos, but running away won't stop the MPs from turning on him. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we dive into today's video, take a quick second to follow us on Twitter. You won't find the blunt truth about Trudeau's endless scandals in the mainstream media. Their liberal bias hides the real stories. But our Twitter feed breaks through the spin and cover-ups. We tweet multiple times daily, delivering straight facts on Trudeau's hypocrisy and failures. We'll leave you the link down in the description box. Tap that follow button now so you never miss our next viral tweet roasting Trudeau. Now let's dive into today's crazy developments. Justin Trudeau has decided to skip the iconic Calgary Stampede this year, according to an email from the PMO that Politico's Ottawa Playbook got a hold of. This comes right after a humiliating by-election loss in Toronto St. Paul's, a former Liberal stronghold and growing calls from within his own party for him to step down. And before I wrap up, I would like to say a few words about last night's by-election. First, uh, I want to thank all the volunteers and candidates for putting their name forward and participating in this important democratic exercise, including our tremendous Liberal candidate, Leslie Church, who ran a strong and positive campaign. I also want to congratulate Don Stewart on his victory in this tightly fought race. But most of all, I want to thank the people of Toronto St. Paul's for exercising your right to vote and making your voice heard. Now, this was obviously not the result we wanted, but I want to be clear that I hear people's concerns and frustrations. These are not easy times, and it's clear that I and my entire Liberal team have much more work to do to deliver tangible, real progress that Canadians across the country can see and feel. We'll never stop working and fighting to make sure that people have what they need to get through these tough times. My focus is on your success, and that's where it's going to stay. It looks like Trudeau's scared of facing angry Western Canadians after losing touch with the Prairie Provinces. So he has decided to avoid the schmoozfest and celebration of Western culture altogether. When Playbook asked for confirmation, the PMO dodged the question, neither denying nor admitting Trudeau's plans to skip the stampede. This isn't surprising given the PM's habit of hiding from controversy and avoiding the media since the shocking by-election loss just over a week ago. After dancing at Pride events in Toronto and Asian festivals in Markham, Trudeau quickly left without taking questions from reporters. Even on Canada Day, he only took questions from a friendly CBC interviewer instead of facing the press corpse. In terms of personal contemplation, if there's any discussion or a thought for you of, of, a, of a tenth Canada Day as Prime Minister, because as I have you, I would be remiss if I didn't ask about what has happened in the last week since the by-election in Toronto, oh, St. Paul's, and the calls from caucus members and former cabinet colleagues, they say it's time for a new leader. Um, listen, there's, there's always going to be lots of reflection after, after a tough loss, but there's also so much to do, and I am committed to doing the work of building a better Canada every single day. So I look forward to uh, next year's Canada Day, and I look forward to many more Canada Days. Uh, this, is, this is the kind of work that we have to remember really, really matters. There are tough days and there are better days, but Canadians are strong and resilient, and that's why we keep moving forward. While Trudeau keeps saying he'll stay on as Liberal leader, his actions tell a different story. Skipping the stampede is just the latest move from a weakened Trudeau, who knows his leadership is on shaky ground. Conservative leader Pierre Polyev is gearing up for a busy schedule meeting donors, supporters, and MLAs. 
Meanwhile, Trudeau can't even find the courage to flip pancakes in Calgary. Polyev is set to be greeted by enthusiastic crowds, while Trudeau hides from the booze and hostility he knows he'll face at the stampede. Trudeau's avoidance of the West is part of a bigger issue. He's completely out of touch with Western Canada. After cancelling pipelines, hurting the oil and gas sector with his policies, and ignoring prairie priorities, it's no surprise he's unwelcome in Alberta. Even his own Liberal MP George Chahal, who Trudeau once praised as an incredible voice for Calgarians, is now calling for his resignation. Skipping the stampede speaks volumes about Trudeau's shaky grip on leadership. This isn't just about dodging one event. It shows how he's lost the confidence of Canadians and his own MPs. A leader who avoids facing the people is a leader who can't lead the nation. Trudeau's declining popularity isn't limited to traditional conservative Alberta either. Even in longtime liberal bastions, anger is growing over Trudeau's failed leadership. The Toronto St. Paul's by-election loss was a major warning sign of eroding support in liberal strongholds across Canada. Even his Canada Day message showed how out of touch he really is, tossing out feel-good words but offering zero solutions for the challenges our country is facing because of him. Hello everyone, happy Canada Day. No matter where you are, I hope you're celebrating the incredible people, the land, and the story that is Canada. It's a story that began more than 157 years ago with indigenous peoples who've called this land home since time immemorial. It's a story of sacrifice. When Canadian soldiers stormed the beaches of Normandy, they knew they were risking their lives. But freedom, even for those across an ocean, even for generations of people they'd never meet, was worth fighting for. Our rights and freedoms are never guaranteed. They're safeguarded every day by trailblazers, journalists, activists, organizers, people who want to keep building a country where we can disagree, sometimes passionately, but where we always come together in the pursuit of something greater than ourselves. A country where everyone has a fair shot, no matter who they are, where they come from, how they pray, or whom they love. Those are the values that hold us together as Canadians. It's the reason so many people around the world save up everything they have and leave behind everything they know to be part of our story. It's a story that includes injustices, ones that we're confronting on our shared path of reconciliation. It's a story of learning, learning that we're stronger not in spite of our differences, but because of them. And it's a story that's still being written by incredible Canadians who step up for their community and country. From the workers and volunteers who cared for our most vulnerable in the long days of the pandemic, to the brave first responders who even now race towards danger to protect homes from wildfires, to the women and men of the Canadian Armed Forces who stand on the front lines fighting for democracy and freedom. People, brave, kind, resilient people. That is the story of Canada. That's what makes our country the very best place on earth. So let's keep making it even better. Happy Canada Day. As former Liberal MP Jody Wilson-Raybould declared that Trudeau must resign as party leader, Catherine McKenna, Trudeau's former Minister of Climate Change, also cited the by-election loss in calling for Trudeau's resignation stating it's time for new ideas, new energy, and a new leader. There's too much at stake in this election, especially on the economy. Make no mistake, the Toronto St. Paul's upset reveals a deeper discontent bubbling underneath Trudeau's smiling PR veneer. After nine years of scandals, unaffordability, and increasingly radical policies, lifelong liberal voters are questioning their support. As MP Chandra Arya explained in an ex-post, in my view, Trudeau has taken the party and the government too far left of center. He went on to say the Prime Minister and his team have made several wrong policy slash strategic choices over the years. Grassroots liberals are getting uneasy with Trudeau's shift to the left and his out-of-touch elitism. This discontent started when he went ultra-woke, focusing more on identity politics than on everyday issues that matter to people. With inflation and the cost of living soaring, things have only gotten worse. Housing, groceries, gas, and other basics are becoming unaffordable, making Trudeau's promises about affordability seem empty. He says he cares about average Canadians, but his policies are making life harder for them. Sensing his weakened leadership, internal grumblings have turned into open rebellion. The Toronto by-election seems to have been the last straw for many in the Liberal ranks. 
Losing one of the safest liberal seats in the country has made many MPs and power brokers realize that Trudeau's leadership is jeopardizing their own political futures. They're now in survival mode. As the Toronto Star summed up, Justin Trudeau's political career is over. He can walk away with dignity now or stick around to get creamed by a man he loathes. Walking away gracefully is clearly not Trudeau's style, but make no mistake, the liberal knives are out for their fallen leader. And you know it's really bad when Trudeau's favorite mainstream media, his go-to source for misinformation and PR defense, is calling for his resignation. MP Nathaniel Erskine-Smith has urged putting Trudeau's leadership to a confidence vote among liberal members. He said in a video posted on X, let's have members, activists, organizers, and grassroots donors across the country decide. MP Wayne Long publicly broke ranks demanding Trudeau resign for the good of the party and country. Insiders expect more MPs to follow suit. Long boldly said, For the future of our party and for the good of our country, we need new leadership and a new direction. The voters have spoken loud and clear they want change. I agree. The pressure is really mounting, and it's clear Trudeau's losing his grip on his own party. Staying in power means keeping the MPs on his side, and with them openly calling for change, it's obvious his leadership days are numbered. The stampede snub is the perfect symbol of Trudeau's downfall. With no loyalty from his party and fading public support, hiding from the spotlight is all he's got left. But Canadians deserve better than a PM who's hiding from everyone, including his own team. The Liberal coalition is falling apart mainly because of Trudeau's elitist arrogance and ideological overreach. It's time for a new leader who can actually connect with Canadians and address their real problems. Trudeau is just not that guy. The right move now, before things get even more humiliating, is for Trudeau to resign. He shouldn't push the patience of Canadians and his own party any further. Well, that's all for now. Has Trudeau's leadership reached the point of no return? Is this the final nail in the coffin? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also subscribe to our newsletter, where we share daily uncensored and unbiased news straight to your inbox. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I'll see you in the next one.